Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. When The Walking Dead TV show first hit the scene, it kind of blew up. A very popular series, and that's kind of how I got into reading the graphic novels and enjoying the show. Then there was a bunch of board games released, and most of, most of them were garbage. And this Walking Dead series that this game is based on, at the time, was one of the better ones. And they had this is the expansion, which is also standalone, which sets everything into prison. It's a fairly easy game, but I should start out by saying it's based off of the graphic novel. So the artwork is from that. You won't see any of the actors from the show. Everything is off of the comics, the art style, the story, etc. So there'll be characters in here that may not be in the movie that will be in this one. So if you're a fan of the graphic novel, this will be appealing for you. This plays more of an adventure game, but a very, very simple one. Really, you're just going to walk around and you're going to fight. And that's about it. And combat is done with dice rolling. So you're going to have that luck of the dice that will be in it. In addition, this game is pretty, 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 pretty hard. You don't know what you're fighting when you walk into a room until you flip it over and see how many of the walkers are there. And then combat is on. There isn't a ton of strategy to it, let's be honest. Because you're going to walk in a room, you're going to run, or you're going to fight. Normally you're going to fight, roll the dice, hope you get the good results. Maybe some weapons can help you, etc. Maybe you want to send in your tank first. Very simplistic strategy here. Doesn't mean it's bad. But you should know what you're going into before you start playing it. And this is a very simple game. There isn't a whole lot to it. The board is neat. Now, if you have the first one and the second one, you can play them back to back. And I think that's a pretty neat experience. At the end of the day, it's a little too simplistic to me. I do like the graphic novels. So I do have that kind of IP that I would be interested in it. But I feel like that it just wasn't enough of the Walking Dead story in it that I would like. And it felt more of a combat game than it did The Walking Dead. So for me, it's going to be a purge. It wasn't something that I wanted to stick around. I found myself wanting to play with all the time. But for those of you that are looking for some, like, just let's walk in a room and let's kill some zombies. I don't need a bunch of miniatures. This will be exactly what you're looking for. For me, it's a purge, but I think this one's going to have an audience. So here's The Walking Dead, The Prison. You can see this is from the comics. This is not going to be based on the popular show. Inside, you get a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. Then I've kind of bagged everything up here. You're going to get some custom dice with different things on them in different colors. You're going to get some black and white chips. Uh, these are the zombies. So there's no miniatures in here. You're going to get standees. That's Rick. So all the artwork's going to come straight from the comics. So it's going to be appealing to some people. Then you're going to get cards. You have, like, um, Lori here that will be of followers and such. You see a lot of text and dice on them. And then you're going to have, like, this will be, like, the zombie ones that come out. The cards are pretty good quality. Uh, not too bad. Uh, I think they, they you know, had the black corners, which some people aren't going to like. But it all has artwork, which appears to be straight from the show. You're going to get some characters in this one. So if you played the other one, Shane's out and Michonne is in. You're going to have Rick, Dale, Andrea, and, you know, I and down here you have Tyrese and Glenn. I would have preferred probably, like, different characters that weren't in the first one. So if you did want to combine them, you had more characters. Um, it is what it is. But I understand why they left those in based on the setting of the prison. I just would have liked more. Now, this is going to be the same kind of board you have with the first one. But it's going to be much longer. Uh, but a little bit scoped out. So instead of having a big area, this is the inside of the prison that you're going to have here. So the components are good, you know, if you like the artwork from that, I think the chits are fine, etc. So here's the rule book, which is kind of weird you don't have like a front page to it, it just starts with an overview and how to play. You can see it's very wordy, uh, some pictures included, but not a whole lot of like examples and stuff, and it kind of takes you through the rules, and then there's like a full rule, so then once you learn the rules, there's even more rules to kind of go through. It's a very simple game. It's not that hard to play. You do get some solitaire rules down here if you wanted to play solitaire, although the game probably works best with more, and you can expand it using the first one. The rulebook was very good. Just kind of know you're going to learn the game, and you're going to learn more stuff in the game. I'm just going to give a very basic overview of this game. I'm not going to teach you all the rules, just a little bit of the flow. So you're going to be tracking your food, your ammo, and your leadership points. So in this one, your leadership points are going to be like victory points and how you win. Everybody's going to have an ability and a bonus here. So once per turn in your turn, if you roll a hat, you may roll a red and add the result to your dice pool. If Carl's in your party, you can take extra fatigue. And then you have your dice pool up here that you're going to be able to have. And what you're going to do with this character, it's going to be your little standee, which is a giant face of Rick, is you're going to move around the board and you're going to clear these areas out of zombies. So each area here that has zombies on it, 
will have zombies placed on the board, which is a little bit different than the noise factor you were having in the original game. So the first thing you do in a turn is you'll be able to spend a can if you want to do the fatigue. So you can spend on your food to remove a fatigue token if you want to. And that's going to be an optional thing you can do to start your turn. Then you'll be able to move. On your turn, you can move one, two, or three spaces in any directions. And these hexes will be the directions that you can move, one, two, or three. Now, when you move into an area, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to spawn the zombies on the spaces here. So you have your little, your little tokens right here. And you'll just kind of spawn these guys out onto the board. And then you'll have the zombies out when you move into an area. So as soon as you move in, if I was going to move into this new area, everything would kind of spawn and populate. Then when you want to fight them, you kind of turn them over and you can see each of the zombies will have a number. It kind of tells you how many zombies are there. Now, before you can move on to a new location, so if I go into cell block C, I would need to completely get cell block uh, C uh, free of zombies, and then I can move on to the yard or another location. So you're trying to get into a location, completely get it free of zombies, and then you can move on. Now, if you move on one of these spaces that have ammo or food on, that's called an encounter location. You would then take, uh, immediately stop, you're done moving, and take care of an encounter card that you would have. So here's a flashlight challenge. Place three zombie tokens in any unsecured location. Unoccupy and succeed at this encounter. Here's your success. Uh, Glenn's zombie killer. Choose up two members of your party, fight three zombies using only the chosen character's dice pool. If you kill all three, you succeed, and you see, add this item to your location. There's a shotgun. Guess how many hats you will roll from your dice pool. Roll your dice pool if you guess correctly succeed at this encounter. So anytime you land on one of these, then you would take the top encounter and do it. And if you succeed, usually you get to gain the item that you would have there. Now, once you find out location is free of zombies, then you can take one of the gold cards and you would do what it says here. Level one, lose an inventory. Two, lose two inventory. Level three, lose two inventory items, uh, food, and ammo. Discard four zombie tokens. Discard seven or discard ten based on where you're at. So you have to utilize these goal cards when you secure a location. Now fighting zombies will require a roll of a die. And what you're going to be looking for is here, you want the zombie faces this. This would kill two zombies. This one would kill just one on this side. So if you roll the dice, now it's fighting a zombie. Here I would kill two zombies with the faces of the zombies, uh, which would be up. So simple roll of a six-sided die. You can also dodge the zombies by the hats on the side of this. Uh, the hats would allow you to dodge them and kind of get out of the way. Sometimes it's better to run than it is to fight. So once you clear seven rooms or there are no tokens left in the pool, the game will end. And whoever has the most leadership points, the hat at the bottom, will be the winner of the game. Very easy. It's kind of running around, doing these encounters, fighting zombies as they come up, which is going to be a lot of it. And hopefully you're rolling the right things on the dice. This game can be very difficult. As you're going through, lots of fun things that pop up. You never know how many zombies are going to be in location. You never know what an encounter is going to be. But they're all right here in front of you. As you go through, you accomplish the goal cards that will be out. And as you try to clear the prison of any and all undead. Who should buy this game? Walking Dead fans, but in particular of the graphic novel, the IP will be very appealing to you. If you like chucking dice, you just want something where you walk in a room and you bash some zombies with uh, some different weapons, this will accomplish that for you. Maybe you're wanting to play with a younger kid that you want to kind of bring in these type of games. Very easy to understand this. You know, it's a little bit bigger than a kid's game, but it could definitely be something you take like a son or daughter and start teaching these mechanisms and teach them to them. If you're looking for a deep strategy game or something a little bit more that brings in the storylines and narrative of the Walking Dead universe, I don't think this is going to do it for you. For me, it's going to be a purge, but I think for a particular gamer, this will strike a chord with them. Purge for me.